just start off by introducing yourself, um, your role in the film, and where you currently, where we, where we are today. Uh, my name is Busi Sizani, I'm one of the producers of the film, uh, Ayanda and the Mechanic, and today we are on set, well this is kind of more behind the scenes, of Dorothy's apartment, who's Ayanda's mom in okay. the film. It's kind of a cool space, right in the middle of Yeovil, and these amazing apartments that uh, our art director found. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about Yeovil and uh, why the film is based in Yeovil. Yeovil is really like the epitome of um, an African melting pot. Traveling around the continent, you find all of these amazing cities that are you know, pop-up cities in a lot of ways. They attract migrants from all over. And Yeovil really represents that, you know, being in South Africa, which is kind of seen as the land of opportunity for a lot of Africans. Um, this is the place where they migrated, you know, since the 70s. Since this place has been quite vibrant and has always been a cultural melting pot. And what our film is about is really, you know, looking at the concept of family, a young woman finding herself within that space and that world, and I think it's really indicative of the kind of world that we all live in now, which is much more cosmopolitan than maybe um, up for our parents. Mm, great. And tell me, um, imagine this was like a, a radio show, yes. so no one would ever see Yeovil. Yes. Can you try to describe, describe to people what does Yeovil look like, feel like, smell like? You know, give a very visceral description of Yeovil. Yeovil to me is like, it has elements that are quite apocalyptic. It looks pretty run down in some areas. But it has this vibrancy that isn't really brought on by color per se, but the color is the people. It's the culture. It's the types of food that you see all over, which in these amazing smells of spices and food from various um, uh, places and countries and cultures. The people don't look the same. It really looks like the, the rainbow nation, a kind of country we all sort of dream about. It has this diversity, this amazing texture and complexity, and nothing about it is certain. You know, just around the corner, you see some beautiful you know, building. One street down, it's run down completely. So for me, it's, uh, it's, it's quite an interesting place to, to be, you know, um, and growing up in a small town myself where everything was really a world of sameness, this is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. And tell me, um, uh, did you ever itself inspire the characters? Kind of, for example, um, Lenka or the Chef? So maybe may talk about the characters that are within the film and, yeah. and, and the relationship between the characters and Yeovil. Yes. Maybe something else comes out of that. I mean, you see Ayanda, the main character, she is half Sutu and half Nigerian. This is the perfect place for her to live. What she loves to do in terms of her job, she's attracted to art, she's attracted to refurbishing old things and giving them a new life. That really plays into what Yeovil is all about, particularly Yeovil 2015, that it's being rebuilt and refurbished and it's been given this, a new life. Um, you look at a character like Lenaka. Lenaka is a chef. He's inspired by the food that he sees around him. Um, you have, you know, internet cafes popping up. This is how technology is kind of seeping into this place that seemed forgotten for quite some time and now is re-entering society and ahead in many ways in, in terms of its diversity, but definitely part of, of modern society. So a lot of the characters, you know, are they very much, um, maybe a little bit of caricatures of the kind of people you find in, in Yeovil, but very, very real. Cool. And Tommy, um, as a producer, what about the film made, made you excited to feel this what you want to be involved in? Yeah. Um, does, it, does it speak to you? And if it does, in what way does it speak? This is a story of a young girl finding herself, finding her feet and her place in the world in a way that no one can teach you. Um, you know, she's thrust in the situation in a man's world in a lot of ways. And that speaks to um, who I am. Everything that I've um, always been about has been about challenging um, 
the stereotype about challenging the status quo. And that's what Ayanda does. She's not by any means a perfect bubblegum kind of pretty girl. She's so complex. She has so many layers. There's things about her I don't like. There's things about her I absolutely adore. So she really represents a real woman, a real young woman in the making. So for me, her character and her story was absolutely attractive from the onset. And then looking at the production as a whole, this is women taking charge, telling their own stories in a way that makes sense to them. Sarah Bletcher, the director, she's an amazing woman and she's done so much for film. And what she does in this film, she, she breeds a very feminine energy to it. And that feminine energy has got nothing to do with being soft and vulnerable, but everything to do with being strong and powerful. So that to me is a very attractive proposition and I had to be part of the film. Awesome. That sounds like a very cool answer. And, um, so good now, and you're like, you're back. Say five minutes. That's cool. Good okay. for us. Um, okay, well, I think I was doing a lot of this as well. I don't know if I should do that again. Fulu is a diamond in the rough. Um, she's, she in, I mean, in a lot of ways, she's very much like Ayanda, and I think that's why she came into set in a casting, and she owned the character. But she brought herself into it, and that, I think, was what set her apart. We saw a lot of people for this role. Um, and she had her own interpretation of what being a young woman is. And I think it's time that young women create that definition for themselves. We live in a time that allows us, it gives us that free space to really explore every aspect of ourselves. And as a 24-year-old girl, you know, she's already doing that. And for a lot of us, that's something that maybe came later because we had predetermined ideas of what being young and a woman in this particular society meant. But for Fulu, she's dead on in that age range that is redefining those boundaries and isn't bound by any preconceived idea of what it is to be a woman and a black woman in Africa today. So I know she's, she's an amazing young woman. And speaking to her, there's a real maturity and depth about her that is very attractive, um, beautiful even. And I think from the, from the onset, I never saw the first audition. I saw her on camera. And there's something, there's a light about her that you just can't, you can't keep, take your eyes off her. And that's, that's not because she's beautiful, although she is very pretty. Um, it's because of this inner confidence um, that she owns and she takes ownership of. And Fantastic. it's beautiful. And then tell me, um, uh, to 15, 14-year-old girls out there yeah. who are at this age where, where they're looking at identity and um, what type of role, you know, how do they fit in, mm. um, what would you like to tell young girls today? Anything There's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. That's what I would say. If you, you know, as a young girl, you sometimes think that there is a right way to be. There's only the you way of doing things. There's, there's only you. You are perfectly unique. And the way you want to be in the world is the best contribution you can be. It's, you know, I, I, there's a saying that says, the real you is more interesting than the fake somebody else. So every time you're trying to conform and you're trying to be like others, you're doing a disservice not only to yourself but to the world as well. So be yourself and I think Fulu as a person and Ayanda as a character speak to the kind of role model that those young girls really need. Yes. Cool. Is there anything from your friend? That was good. Is there anything from your side that's 
something unexpected about this process, or something that's, yeah, I don't know, something that's, yes. that's, that's like stands out for you? First time producer, I think you have a very idyllic, idealistic, you have a very idealistic idea of what this process is. Um, I did not anticipate the many, 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 many takes <laughs> that it takes <laughs> to get the perfect shot. Um, but I have to say, there's nothing quite like that very first day on set when everything that's been spoken about around tables, discussed, put on paper, been in emails back and forth, um, has, has been kind of considered ad nauseum being real and right there in front of you. Um, I think that was quite an emotional moment for me, arriving at five o'clock in the morning on that first day and seeing here it is. This is, this is the shop. This is the panel beating shop that we've all been talking about and dreaming about, and here it is today. And I think the other thing that has, was a surprise was just how many people it takes to make it all come together. You know, I guess when you're sitting in production meetings, you're still discussing with you know, kind of the core team, and you don't realize behind all of those people are five, 10, 15 other people that make it all happen, and how each of those little cogs need to work perfectly and in sync and in harmony for everything to work. Um, so yeah, you know, coming from television, we work with small crews, and I just saw 10 times the number of people. <laughs> but it, it's been amazing. Awesome. Cool. I'm very happy. Maybe, I'm very happy. Maybe, maybe last question. Yeah. Can you just tell us the coolest guy on set? And uh, why he's so cool? Mm -hmm. And why everyone says that that is wrong? Just like, <laughs> you know, people are confused. Like, why is he just so awesome? <laughs> the coolest guy on set is... I have to get back to you on that. <laughs> it's only day 15. <laughs> we have to get back to you. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Alex. No, thanks a lot. Cool. That was easy. Very easy.